hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today in this video we'll be discussing on how we can transpose an excel table using power automate desktop okay so here uh, let me first show you this excel table which we are going to transpose which, like which we are actually uh, transposing so as you see this is the excel table which we want to transpose it and once transpose this data should some uh, should look like something like this okay something like this this data should look okay so uh, we will see how we can achieve the same using power automate desktop okay so let me just uh, delete this one okay so i want this to get transposed something like as i shown earlier and like it's like uh, ro this column is getting transposed to rows okay so let's see how it can be done in the power automate desktop rows so for that uh, what first what you have to do is you have to uh, read this data from sheet 1 that is the first step you have to read the data from sheet 1 and convert it into a data table and that is the first step that we have to do for that we will be using some excel actions so let me close this one let me first uh, launch excel and let's select the document which we want to read okay i don't want to make my excel instance as visible okay that is fine yeah that is fine I will just uh, launch the Excel. Now what I will do is, uh, see, here as you know, right, we have two Excel sheets, sheet 1 and sheet 2. But I want to make m sheet 1 as an active worksheet or I want to m ensure that sheet 1 is an active worksheet because you know that Excel actions in Power Automate works with active worksheet only. So you have to ensure that sheet 1 is active. So currently we want to get data from sheet 1, right? So for that what we will be do using is we will be using set active excel worksheet action and here we will be activate the worksheet with this sheet name that is sheet 1. Save it. Now after doing this we have to get the uh, first free row or first free column from this particular excel sheet. For that uh, we will be using this action get first free row or column we'll be dragging it here okay so uh, the output of this particular action like we will be feeding that excel instance where we need to get the first free row or first free column of the active worksheet and it will give two values one is first free column first free row first free column and row represent the blank row after the last entry okay so now it represents the position now after getting all this data or like after uh, after using all the three actions next will be what next we will be reading the data from the excel worksheet and here we want to read the value from the range of cell so we will be selecting the value from the range of cell as option and here we our starting uh, cell is what a1 so we want to read the data from A1 to till the end. So for that, uh, what we'll be doing here is we'll be using start column as A, uh, start row as one, end column as what? Uh, end column as uh, first free column minus one. So, because why we are using minus one? As you know, because first free column or first free row represent the position of the blank entry uh, bef uh, after the last entry, right? So, we want to get the last entry row position and column position respectively. That is why we are using minus one after that. And if you go to the advanced section, you have to make sure that this first uh, this option, right, is disabled. Why? Because if you don't, if you enable it, 
this ABC right which you see at the top will be considered as headers and for our transpose operation I don't want to consider this as headers you will see why we are not considering this as headers right now okay otherwise it will be a little difficult so we won't be considering uh, ABC as headers right now while reading the data and now what we'll be using is we'll be using uh, variable like we can rename the variable in a better way so let me rename it as dt1 for better understanding once we did this one next step is what so next step is we'll be using some data table actions to transpose our data table okay so for that first we have to initialize the we, we have to initialize another data table which will be stored in the transpose data table but for initializing a data table we need the headers right so if you see if when you are transposing this particular data table what happens is the columns right will be converted to rows and if you see uh, this will be considered as what this will be considered as row and the uh, for a transpose data table how should the column looks like the column depends upon the number of rows right so if there are let's say seven uh, let's say if there are seven rows or let's say if there are six rows it means that when you're transposing it you will have a uh, data table with what S uh, six columns right so uh, that is how we should design it so if, if in this case you see we have uh, what we have seven uh, seven rows so at that time when you are transposing it it should have seven columns for your better understanding I can show you the transpose data okay you see so when you're transposing it what happens it is it is having uh, it is having how much rows seven rows so it, it is having seven columns so uh, since we are not concerned about the column names here because uh, we just want to transpose it and write it here we are not considering about the column names in in the date in the in this data table right so what we can do here is we can create uh, sample column names based on the row count in the data that is present in sheet 1 and then we will be creating a data table uh, out of it which actually store our what transpose data so let's do that so maybe it will be confusing you at first but once you complete this or once we executed this part and once I show you the output you will get to you will get to know why we did this and all got it so maybe let's further move further ahead so now let me create a list which actually stores the headers so for that I'll be using this action create a new list and I'll be giving a name to the list that is headers so for easy understanding and now what I will be using is I'll be using loop so what I want to do is I want my loop to run this many number of times based on the row count based on the row count in the DT1 I want to loop that number of times and create random column names uh, uh, random column names okay so let's say uh, the if the row count is 7 I want to loop 7 times and create 7 random column names for my transpose data table so for that uh, so here I'll be lo uh, I will have to specify the start from and end to so here I will be starting from 0 you can start from 1 as well or you can start from 2 or anything but adjust your end to accordingly end to you have to adjust accordingly so here I am starting from 0 that's my wish now end to while specifying end to what I will be doing here is I want to uh, create the column names for my transpose data table depending upon my row count so I will be using row count specifying minus one because if you include dt1 dot rows count for example if there are, uh, so what happens is you will have total num seven columns being generated or uh, you will have uh, one extra column will be generated so that will create a problem we don't want to do that so we will be ending up to dt1 dot rows count minus one now I have to increment it by one all the time save it and now I'll be adding the item to list okay now what I will do is I will append 
the column names like i will append the column names to the uh, headers list so here i told you i'll be i'll be just creating a column name something like the first column name should be column zero second column name should be column one third column name should be column two something like that so this loop index will actually helps to control the number which is coming in that column so i will show you how it is being done so i'll be specifying the item add the item as column then loop index so loop index always starts from zero and end till uh, number of element minus one right so here it should be like uh, for first uh, co first column it should be column zero second column it should be column one like that and i want to append it to the list headers i will click on save now this headers will contain the, the generated column names for my transpose data table so since we have the um, headers name for our transpose data table now it is easy to create a data table right a transpose data table for that uh, what we will be doing is we will be using set variable dt2 and now uh, this dt2 actually represent the transpose data table and what we will be doing is we will be specifying the headers okay yeah so this is how uh, we initialize the data table you see and now once we did this one what we have to do next is we want to uh, once we have created our transpose data table now what we want to do is we want to take each each column and take the values and append it as a row like we will be taking each column data we will append it as a row so now let's do that next so for that we have to loop through each column in that particular dt1 data table for that we will be using for each now what we will be doing is we will be uh, using column okay and uh, now here dt1 dot column gives us a list of column names so now we will be using column like we will be iterating through dt1 dot column which will be have the list of column names and the column variable represent the column which we are iterating through so i'll be saving it now what we'll be doing is we'll be retrieving the column names to a list and now now uh, what i want to do here is i want to retrieve a data table column to the list so here currently i am iterating through column right so i want to convert that column data to a list so that once i convert it to a list i can append it as a row to dt2 so that is what my logic that's what my idea is so i want to specify the column name which i am currently iterating so currently i am iterating through what column so i will be specifying that now the output of this will be i'll be getting this data in the form of list so now i'll be clicking on save okay so once it is done what we will do is we'll be appending this list to our dt2 uh, data table so for that we'll be using a set variable again specifying dt2 and uh, now i will be appending this column as a list variable to dt2 so for that uh, yeah this one so i'll be using removing this percentage sign because it makes the expression as invalid because we already have percentage outside so now it will append this column as a list to dt2 and it will save to dt2 okay so once this is done so we once this is done we'll get the dt2 which is the transpose data table so now what we'll be doing is once we got the transpose data table we have to write it back to what sheet 2 so for writing it to sheet 2 what we have to do we have to do two steps here one is we have to activate sheet 2 because currently our active worksheet as per the power automate desktop is sheet 1 now we have to activate sheet 2 then we have to write the data to sheet 2 
and for that what we have to do is we have to uh, go to the excel actions and use set active worksheet and here I will be activating sheet 2 ok cool mm, and now what we will be doing is once we activate the sheet 2 we will be writing the dt2 to excel sheet so for that what is the value you want to write dt2 and I want to write it on what I want to write it from a1 so for that a Now once this is done, we'll be closing the Excel because uh, we don't want the Excel instance to be open, right? So we can close the Excel by saving it because if we don't save it, we don't see the data or we don't see the transpose data. So I will be just uh, closing this again. Okay. So now our flow is ready. As you see, we first read the data from sheet one. We do the transpose operation and then we write the uh, transpose data to sheet two now let's see this one let's see whether it is running so now you see it has created auto generated column names for our transpose data table and it has added the data and uh, returned to the uh, sheet 2. Now let's open the sheet 2. Yep, perfect. You see, sheet 2, we can see the transposed version of this sheet 1. Right? Cool. So I hope now you got an idea on how uh, we can uh, create a transposed data. Right? So now if I go back to my power automate flow, so let me show you how the transpose data looks like. You see, this is how my transpose data looks like. And you see this column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3. These are actu these actually appeared due to what? These headers. These headers, right? We have, uh, we have created a variable name headers, right? Which actually store what? Auto generated column names for my transpose data if I go here you see this is the column names which I have created based on the row count in the DT1 and which I have appended it as the column name for my DT2 as you see here so uh, this is all what I want to show about transpose operation of an excel table but this method you can even extend it further as well like here we are using data excel as the data source right where we are taking the data transposing it and writing back to excel sometimes there are other scenarios also like you are scrapping some details from website and you want to transpose it as well at that point you can utilize the same logic here but the sh steps may be different depending upon how you are extracting the data table okay it depends so but uh, but this actually helps you uh, at that case as well like the order in it uh, the order in which it is done would be same like the idea that we are going to do here would be same but the steps will be little different there. maybe i think the steps may be different while uh, capturing the headers and all that will be little different but apart from that everything would be same so this logic you can even extend based uh, when you only have the when you are extracting the data from a website or something and then you want to transpose it okay so that's all I want to show here. I hope this helped you and thank you.